So hello everyone, my name is Milos, I'm coming from Serbia from a company Strawberry Energy and I'm really excited to be here to try to together with you reimagine the cities of the future. So uh, our mission is Strawberry is to create the world in which you will never run out of power again. And we started to do that, but first, uh, the, as you know, the world is changing constantly and as well the climate is changing and we have to do something about it. All of you remember, for example, the, the Hurricane Sandy, which hit the United States a couple of years ago and how devastated it was. But it's not only happening to, to the United States. It's happening all the time, all around, all around the world. For example, uh, this is my, my hometown, city of Obranovac in Serbia. Uh, last month, he was uh, dramatically flooded. Uh, it was the biggest flood in the history of the region. Uh, water came out of nowhere in the middle of the night. Uh, 50,000 people got trapped into the city. Uh, the electricity went down. I was on a business trip outside of the country and I was not able to communicate with my family to see are they alive for two days. So the, the nature is telling us that we have to do something about this. And honestly, I, I believe in that change. So uh, this is me uh, installing some solar panels. I became fascinated with this technology like early in my high school days when I realized that finally we have the technology to do what nature is doing it since the beginning of, of Earth. Uh, using the energy of the sun to power our daily needs. So I became, I, I became fascinated with it and I started looking how, how I can bring this into the people's everyday life. You know, and 100 years ago, uh, my countryman Nikola Tesla said that uh, the, the, the future of the mankind will rely on clean technologies. And I believe in that as well. I believe that one day the whole earth will be powered by clean energy. Every home, every city. And when we are speaking about the cities, we saw that Today, 50% of the world population live in the cities and that number will continue to grow. We learned that for these two days here. So cities are definitely the future. But the cities are also changing because uh, we as a people change. Uh, the, with the growth of social media, with the growth of uh, portable devices, wearable technology, we change, uh, it changed how we interact with the space around us, with our time, among each other. So we have, to, we have to adopt to these changes and we have to actually reimagine the cities to see what we can do to make these cities smarter and better and more convenient for, for people to live in. So, uh, as you may notice, uh, additional revolution is happening as we are speaking, uh, and that's a portable mobile revolution. I would say, how many of you has the cell phones? So, like everybody. <laughs> yeah, as can mention, this is just the beginning. It started with, with your smartphones, but it will evolve to a, a portable uh, what, to, uh, Google Glass, portable devices like uh, your smartwatch, your uh, fuel band, and so. So it's going to be even more bigger and bigger. And the additional problem in that manner is uh, how many of you last night get empty battery? Because I, I saw a couple of people who actually uh, uh, was like, really pissed off because the, the, their batteries was empty. So it's, excuse my French, but, but <laughs> it, it's true and all of you know that. So basically, uh, this is what, what's happening each second in each corner of the world. All our, all our devices are dependent on their batteries and their batteries from time to time get empty. And we, have, we wanted to try to solve this problem because each of us experienced at least once this. <laughs> you know, your phone became empty or your tablet, whatever, you are in the middle of the city, you don't, maybe you have your charger with you, maybe you don't, but basically you're disconnected from all of your world. And we wanted to solve this problem, but not only to solve it, uh, but to solve it on, on, a, on a right, sustainable way. So we created the world's first solar charging station, we called Strawberry Tree. Strawberry Tree is uh, <coughs> a green urban furniture which we aim to install in the public spaces in the city, which has built-in chargers so you can go and recharge your portable devices when you are in the city rush on the go. So but what's also important is we also, it also offer you a place to, uh, uh, offer you a Wi-Fi and a place to sit and rest in the middle of the city rush. So, uh, so we designed Strawberry Tree to be uh, reliable, to work during, not only during the sunlight, but also to work during the night, during the cloudy weather, during the snow even. So people can rely that they will have energy at the strawberry tree. On another side, uh, we wanted also to be strawberry tree to be a smart device, to measure its own impact, to measure the impact of the people who are using it. So basically, we, what, what we did is so each strawberry tree can measure the amount of energy it saved, how many carbon dioxide it saved, but it's, what's even more cooler, it can measure for us as, a, as a users, as a people, how much energy we saved. We say, so for example, with an app, which, which you can download, you can go to a strawberry tree and, and see how much energy you saved personally, 
share that with your friends, compete with them, maybe get awarded for actually being good. So in, in, in a larger sense, that's a great tool for measuring impact and for motivation, motivating people about that they, they that, that change has to come from us and that we can individually make the change. So uh, the different dimension of the strawberry <laughs> tree, which is uh, as, quite as, important, as important as energy, is its, its social potential. As you know, the urban city life, uh, the, as much as I can see, the, the most requested feature is that there is no enough place to hang around in the city, to, to meet new people, to, to, to speak with the people in the real life, not only over the, over the phones. So the strawberry tree was designed to be this kind of a social urban hub where people can gather, meet, uh, speak with other people, sit for a while while they're charging their phones. But what's even more, but for some uh, groups of people, it will be even more important uh, because, for example, if you, if you have like, uh, youngsters who are always on their cell phones, or if you have tourists and visitors of your city, they do not have any other place. They don't have a home in your city to go to recharge. So for them, it's, it's even more important to have some place to go to have Wi-Fi and, and to recharge. But this is the numbers with some, something about numbers. So far, we installed 12 strawberry trees in 10 different cities in Europe, and we are continuing to doing so. Next month, we are installing the first one in the city of Moscow. After that, we are installing one in Brussels, which is the capital <laughs> of Europe. And in terms of users, we had so far people who are actually using it. So far, we had 300,000 users uh, on our devices, and that number continued to grow as we speak. Uh, but what's important for us is that uh, it, we were recognized from all around the world. For example, the Mashable included us in, 20, in the list of 25 technologies every smart city should have in the future. Which brings us to that future. Uh, the, the, our grand vision in here is to build these devices in all kind of uh, urban hotspots in the city. Uh, parks, squares, streets, university campuses, all other places where you can go and we can make them smart and useful for us, but not only to uh, but only to I implement new stuff like wireless charging, like sensors for, and for, for, air, for air quality or something. So uh, the, the, like, I would like to finish it. This is just the beginning. We are just getting started. So far, we installed just a couple of these in Europe, and we are happy to, to launch here in the United States. And this is an open call for all of you, uh, mayors, urbanists, architects, university campuses, people, to actually come to us and to try to, to, to make the world a better place and that would be all. Thank you very much.